I've been reclaiming 18650s for a little while now and I've got these left over from projects, my solar uh, power project in particular. And of course I'm not really repurposing or recycling these if they just end up sat in this box doing nothing. So I need to start thinking of things I can do with these batteries and uh, I think I've come up with one at least because I was sat in my car the other day and I finished the mints or uh, well oh no I didn't quite hmm and I know lots of people have done projects in Altoids tins excuse me while I finish my mint um, so I thought why not do the same and uh, could I make an 18650 based power bank out of an Altoids tin so I think this might work quite well. An 18650 sits in quite nicely with just sort of a couple of mil space above it. And uh, I think we can get three in here. And we can. And uh, if they're all nice and neat in a line, uh, there's a bit of space here to put some circuitry in. A little module, perhaps. Uh, I guess this is going to end up being hot glued in. Um, and we need to think about the fact that we are using a metal box. So I've got a few of these pre-made power bank module uh, things for 18650s, but clearly this one is going to be too big, so that's out of the window straight away. Uh, these two here are, I think, one amp output. So they've got a micro USB input and a USB A output and uh, I think these would be great unfortunately these arrived and the toroid rings are broken on both of them they've had a, a knock in the post um, so I suspect these aren't going to work very well and that leaves me with this module which is a bit more complicated than the others and in fact it has no uh, charging functionality for the lithium iron cells so i'm going to have to think about that uh, but this is a single usb port and uh, this chip here uh, this is a chip that does uh, qualcomm quick charge 2.0 i think rather than 3.0 um, so i think we should give it a go and we'll try it on my power supply uh, which is set to 3.7 volts and uh, 200 milliamps but uh, it's delivering apparently no milliamps whatsoever into here let's see what happens that's fine 5.03 volts 24 milliamps being delivered into the uh, the boost converter quick charge USB thingamajig and with three batteries that little module fits in just lovely there at the end um, but now I need to think about charging well of course it's going to be the TP4056 and the uh, sort of second generation of the uh, TP4056 the one with the protection circuitry on the DW01 and the 8205A MOSFET uh, I might plug all of these in and just try and find out the regulation voltage uh, because we have found out in a previous video that they can be quite different and I would like to get this up to full charge um, but for now I'll break that one off and I'll work out where I can put it because this is quite a large module and it's orientated kind of the wrong way isn't it um, so it's not going to fit on the end because uh, that's too high and obviously the lid's going to come down as well so it may well be that it needs to fit sideways on um, and somehow fit there at the side or the final option is do I just leave it hanging around in there and then I can open up the tin to charge it that's probably the neatest solution 
So I'm going to use these three 18650s because they came out of the same battery pack and they're almost identical when I tested them 2096 milliamps, 2098 and 2095. These couldn't be much closer. Now my understanding is a brand new 18650 you buy from a retailer are almost impossible to solder but because this has been uh, hot welded, hot tab welded before it shouldn't be too difficult so a uh, bit of solder on the iron. I've changed to my larger soldering iron tip as well. Um, is that taking? Not so well. Solder's going a bit sludgy. Uh, too much heat being dissipated. Let's see if I turn the iron up, see if that's any better. That's flowing a lot better. Yeah, don't need too much, I wouldn't have thought. Just enough. I've only got quite thin uh, nickel strip tabbing wire stuff, so... Now this nickel strip is very cheap, mainly because it's not nickel, I think it's steel uh, and then nickel plated, um, but it does the job, so I've cut a section off there, we'll see if we can solder that in, well that seems to have made a reasonable connection. And again, so slightly off there for some reason. Okay, we'll see how that goes. I work the opposite way round on the positives. Um, and uh, they're definitely pretty well soldered together actually. They don't seem to want to move at all, so. Uh, Hopefully, that'll be all right. And we'll just tin this piece of wire. And connect it to the negative. Bus bar. A uh, bit of heat shrink over the end here and just help support that joint and uh, make sure that's insulated, but I will also put some insulation tape on the batteries themselves to ensure that they don't short out on anything. It's probably a bit hot this really for uh, heat shrinking, but if you keep an eye on it, it's not too bad. So I need to cut a hole in this box, so uh, I need to at least mark how wide I need the hole so there's a couple of marks I've got some awfully rough guides here but uh, let's get dremeling we'll drill some holes first now I wouldn't normally recommend using these types of snips but as you can see well they're not working properly so these are destined to be abused and uh, some new ones are on their way and after a touch of filing I think that works quite well. I'm not going for any uh, prizes on beauty here um, so a few layers of insulation tape over the positive and uh, that should fit in quite nicely bit of a squeeze but that's probably a good thing and then we've got the wires here to connect to my TP4056 module and the uh, quick charge 2.0 module to stick into the bottom of this tin and there we have the wiring complete uh, positive the battery going into the B plus negative into the B minus uh, positive of the module going into the out plus negative out minus and uh, let's just check that works. There we go, five volt, no amps, perfect. So I'll pop some insulation on the bottom of this module 
to ensure it doesn't short with anything and uh, now I think we just need to fit the components in and uh, hot glue them in right then let's give this a go bit of glue down there we'll need to be quick all the thought because that tin's going to be quite cold see what that's like it's protruding a bit um, yeah perhaps that'll do I think it's protruding a little bit um, and then we obviously need to get the batteries in place as well uh, they're going to be alright I think uh, but I need a bit of glue underneath something like that stringy hot glue everywhere Okay, they're uh, roughly in, and then all those wires should squidge down, but I think I'm going to put some hot glue on the top of that module to insulate it from anything, because of course the positive is right there next to the case. So that should just help it hold in. Not pretty, definitely functional. And then I think a bit of insulation across that top as well of the TP4056 module. Not too much though because I don't want it to get warm. Okay, so it does fit in, and uh, is that working? Yes, it is, 5 volts, and uh, it's pretty ugly, I'll admit, but do you know what? It's functional, and uh, I might just put a bit more glue around these cells, um, and perhaps we'll call that a day. So there we are then, an Altoids USB uh, power bank. It's not the prettiest solution, but I think it'll work. And uh, hopefully it won't blow up. So uh, let's just try that module. Um, 5 volts, 1.6 amps. See how high we can get it. I'll be very pleased with 2 amps. Excellent, 2.2 2 amps, and then it turned off. And there it is charging with the uh, charging LED on. And uh, that brings it back to life, which is good. So there we have it, an Altoids Peppermint Box USB power bank um, that's capable of Quick Charge 2.0. Although I don't have any Quick Charge devices but never mind hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and i'll see you next time thanks for watching